Wow. Quite the intro. Well, that sounds familiar. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to The Last Grenadier 1946. This is clearly a mod for Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostrunt from the legendary Wigga. Welcome back. Good to see you all here. And uh, boy, oh boy, an 11 mission saga available now on Steam in the workshop with a massive mod including the Germans, the Finns, and the Soviets in 1946, obviously. Uh, some of these missions taking place in late 1945 and then going into 1946. I think this one's actually taking place in uh, September or October. Some of the future missions take place uh, just in the early winter and whatnot. But, uh, all right, let's get on the front line and start digging in. Relieve a ambushed allied forces. Let's go. So it looks like uh, Finnish forces here are going to relieve other Finnish forces that were ambushed along the road. Oh, yeah. Looks like they've taken some hits. Uh, some tanks and trucks of either the Finns or the Germans or both have been hit hard. And uh, we're going to have to go ahead and dig in and repel the Soviet attack. So let's get started. And uh, welcome back. Good to see you all here. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you do. As, of course, this will be a massive saga on the channel. A not I, I was going to say trilogy, but way more than that. 11 or, well, probably more episodes of a crazy fictional World War II action taking place all the way up to more than likely the Arctic Circle and beyond where some of these bases are and or secret missions that go deep into the Soviet Union. I don't know. We have yet to see. Now, this campaign has been made before by Wigga in Metal War Assault Squad 2, and uh, I think the context was uh, somewhat the same, but also very different, taking place in Finland. But, of course, with it being on Gates of Hell, the more, well, I'd say the superior version of Metal War Assault Squad, this is the uh, definitive edition of everything that you've ever wanted from Metal War and or Metal War Assault Squad, including uh, even the... Uh, Rob's Realism mod for Metal War Assault Squad 2, although I think that's still even better to this day uh, than the Metal War, or sorry, the Gates of Hell multiplayer. However, it's still very, very, very good. It's just like maybe 0.1% better uh, just because it was, uh, you know, a little bit more in-depth and realistic. However, that could always return, and there's plenty of mods for multiplayer. And damn it, the Metal War Assault Squad and the Gates of Hell community are insane, and the uh, mod makers never stop churning these out. I took a break for a while, and I'll probably still continue to take breaks as I have played pretty much every mission from the Battle of the Bulge to D-Day to Operation Mercury, uh, fictional operations in uh, an American and British invasion of Japan, and, um, you know, all sorts of uh, real and fictional and unknown missions and other things like that. Uh, the campaign for Call to Arms Gates of Hell is very good, too, but the mod community is just, they, they just go well beyond. Of course, the main game has a lot of stuff in there like, uh, you know, outskirts of Stalingrad and a Battle of Kursk and all sorts of uh, Eastern Front missions. That The game yet has to include Western Front stuff, which I, obviously the name Eastern Front or Ostfront. Uh, but hopefully we get more stuff. Of course, we got now the Finns in the Winter War. Uh, there's a DLC that adds a lot more vehicles to the game and uh, campaign missions. But also now, one for the Finns that adds the whole Lapland War and the Winter War and Continuation War, uh, spanning across a few missions on those. So pretty damn cool. And uh, they've also added stuff like um, the Siege of Sevastopol with the 600mm Carl Mortar and whatnot. Uh, just from the devs, which means that when they put in those assets professionally and they look great, then the modding community just gets to gobble it all up and add all sorts of different missions or different perspectives. You know, you could cover the battle of or the siege of Leningrad 35 different times and have different missions and uh, objectives from all sorts of different creators. All right, well, now we're having the Finns dig in, or they've dug in a little bit, and we're having our uh, boys kind of stand by. The Soviets could have mortars or artillery or something like that, so I'm just trying to keep uh, everybody on standby, ready to be mobile just in case something happens. Uh, when it comes to Sir Henkel or Wigga or many of the other creators who've done a, a wonderful job of making all these missions, uh, Sternfuhrer, PK, and the list goes on and on of people who've made just incredible missions. I've gotten used to uh, trying to expect the unexpected, and, you know, at any moment a tank could come from this road or behind us, so heads on a swivel, and everyone's dug in. All right, now, so, so apparently the Soviets will be attacking again, and we just need to uh, rescue all these troops from the uh, attack, so let's go ahead and see if we can snipe the remaining guys here. Do we have a sniper? Well, we have a rifle, so I'm sure more forces are on the way, but let's go scout out uh, the Soviets, as they've already destroyed, wow, Panthers, and, uh, oh, never mind, here they come. Okay, I can see them on the map, they are now approaching. And, uh, all the troops in green that you see on the mini-map on the left that are dispersed here throughout the woods are not under my command, so only the troops in blue 
and or with the highlights above them can you see that but this is one of the this is one of the most realistic looking games i've ever seen for an rts and mods can improve this even more uh i'm also playing on a more medium setting as you see in the lower left corner this game's running at about 60 frames per second and recently we played the iwo jima map which had it tried to simulate the 100 plus thousand men invasion of Iwo Jima, and so I turned things down to try to have that run more smoothly. Now, uh, the game looks a little muddy right now, and that's actually kind of good because, I mean, literally this is all it is, is just mud. There's heavy rains and some snow and whatnot that's mel melting, and the land just kind of looks uh, kind of bleh. And I think that actually is quite fitting for it, to be honest. Uh, but, of course, this game looks way better than this, especially if you're... Uh, you know, just playing it yourself and not having all sorts of other things running in the background. And also, of course, mods can improve this even more. So, But it's still graphically impressive. And uh, if maybe Company Heroes 3 didn't really scratch your itch or if you're disappointed with that, uh, I thought the Italian campaign was, you know, okay. I, li I like to see that dynamic stuff. But this game also offers that both on the German and the Soviet perspective in a dynamic campaign, as they call, I think, Conquest Mode. That allows you to do that, and you can play missions that are kind of like this. You know, it's an attack and defend, that kind of thing. So, uh, but yeah, a really impressive game, and if you're unaware about uh, Call to Arms, uh, the original game, the base game, is a game that takes place in modern times, which is Call to Arms. Then there's a DLC for it called Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront, which is like the World War II version of that. And then on top of that, there's even more DLCs like this Finland, uh, or Finnish... Uh, units and additional German units, but the modding community has made a lot of this stuff before for Metal War Assault Squad 2, and they've either high res updated it and then brought it over to uh, basically call to arms gates of hell. All right, enough about that. We're holding against the Soviets. You can see them pushing in from here. Lots of troops flooding in, lots of riflemen, possible radio men, AT rifles, uh, grenadiers, maybe flamethrowers amongst them. Who knows? It is 1945, so the horde approaches, and even they have some Panzer Foss. Look at that. Soldier here with a Panzerfaust, of course, the AT. It's an anti-tank uh, shape charge. It's almost like a recoilless rifle uh, that um, fires off of the shape charge. Quite interesting. Different from the Panzer Schreck, which is over here, the other German anti-tank variant. So we're definitely going to see some vehicles on both sides. And, uh, yeah, these trenches look great. All the infantry are capable of digging out longer trenches like this, and our boys are laying down fire like crazy. Really cool stuff. We actually see snipers. Doing a good job. All these red blotches is a enemy soldier, a Soviet soldier that's fallen in battle. And anything in yellow is troops that are uh, on our side, but maybe not necessarily under our command. So most of our troops are still alive, uh, but a lot of them obviously dead. Vehicles destroyed before we got here under our command. So, But we're ordering everyone to just basically hold the woods, and we're trying to keep everybody back. Uh, there's enemy machine guns out there, but we've got a mixed match of PPSHs, uh, Panzer Shrek, Panzer Foss. You know, German equipment, Soviet equipment, whatever. Uh, so long as it works, we use it. So obviously a lot of uh, Finnish riflemen there repelling the Soviet attack on the roadway. And uh, it is time to get out of here, so let's move. I'm assuming we're going to retreat somewhere. Or actually attack somewhere. I, I, we're on the defensive, so... Yeah, get out of there. Alright, so let's go... I don't know, I'm going to mix into this regular infantry here. And see if we get command of these troops too, and then move everybody as a blob. Where are they going? All right, everybody's retreating wet north. North, okay. Oh, the map is expanding now. All right, we're expanding to the north, and the new objective is to defend the first line of defense. All right. Well, the Soviets are on their way with a full-scale attack, and here comes oh boy, artillery. We're going to take some losses. There's no doubt about it. I don't have control of these troops. Well, f in the chat. Well, now I do. Oh boy. Wow, okay. Getting scammed. A sole survivor. Oh, wow. Should have stayed put, huh? Didn't really seem like a good idea, though. Actually, these troops are fully retreating, so... I don't know. They were needed on the front line. Okay, well, congratulations, Juka. You have now... <laughs> You are now promoted to king, because there's nobody left. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, good. We got additional troops here. Well, a shame about that, but that would be war, ladies and gentlemen. R and Jesus. All right, we've got about seven minutes until the Soviets arrive with another attack from the south, and some of their troops from the east that pushed in east to the west side will probably be here, too. Yeah, the Kuhu. Let's go ahead and get ready for the Kuhu. 
and fire up that 100 degree sauna. All right, we got a uh, Panzer IV ready to go. Nice. Uh, before we do that, though, I'm going to try to get all the infantry into the trenches here. We actually have a machine gun at our disposal. But what we lack now in manpower, we can make up for with technology such as the tanks. Now, another thing, too, is I would not put all of my troops on the front line all at once anyway because of uh, artillery situations like that. And, uh, of course, that could happen at any time. We could put all of our troops inside these trenches, and then there could be a, a cutscene where an aircraft comes over with a bomber. So anything can happen in these campaigns where some scripted events can really devastate your uh, chain of command and or take away everything that you thought you were once going to get. Another smart move here would probably be to get these uh, ammunition crates to the front lines. So since the boys will be fighting over here, I'm going to try to take the right flank and the left flank and maybe keep the tank in the middle since it can traverse left and right uh, if we have enough troops to actually command that thing. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have an artillery cannon at our disposal? No, a, a 76 millimeter F-22, so an anti-tank gun, which is nice. Uh, looks like there's one up here as well. No, it's a 1902 76 millimeter artillery gun as well. Looks like the boys are still shooting at the stragglers in the woods. Now, we don't have any medics, I think, at our disposal. I don't think I have any way to go rescue those guys. Oh, we do. Okay. Hold on. Well, there's a chance. All right, we'll go ahead and send the medic out to see what he can do. Well, it looks like most of these guys are possibly going to be rescued. And doing so under fire. All right, maybe it's not a lost cause after all. Coming back for the survivors. See how many we can rescue here. All right, well, maybe we can get those troops uh, back here any moment. Bring some ammunition to the left side. You can already see some at these trenches here, too. And a cool thing is, we've already got bunkers loaded up with troops inside MG42s, it looks like. Actually, no troops inside. We're going to need more manpower. we got a huge defense, not enough manpower. Looks like a few of them have perished. But we're going to keep that whole group there to defend the uh, medic as he's doing his job. All right, four minutes until the Soviets approach. Get those supplies out of there. I'm going to try to bring these ones to the trenches. Actually, we do have a... Well, we have some... Art you know, actually, I'm going to put it over here by this artillery gun. That might be able to resupply that. I'm not sure how much that has for ammo. But we shall figure that out. Wow, most of the infantry has been rescued. Only four of them dying from that artillery. No way. Wow. Not bad. Okay, well, I'm very proud of that. Good work. Glad we went back for them. Glad we covered the medic. We've also set up defenses here and have supply nearby. We can also get these troops to move this crate a little closer to the trench. We just uh, back it up this way. Now, that may explode if the Soviets shoot at it, so that could be uh, what we call a bad time if it happens to get destroyed. Put it down, boys. What are you doing? Yeah, that damn mode. Uh, there we go. Now, a lot of our infantry that was just in the fight are going to need that ammo. You can already see, like, half of, <laughs> half of that already being taken up, so let's go ahead and get these guys over here first. The ones who were just in that shootout will need ammo. And it looks like we've brought some ammo for that gun. This could be uh, possibly only for infantry, but it's a good spot to put it because it will also cover some of these troops that will be on the front line. As we take losses, we'll replenish them. I don't want to put everybody on the front line at once. Let's go ahead and get the rest of our forces in. Wow, I can't believe how many we saved. That's great. A fortunate turn of events. 
I'm going to wait there a little bit longer and wait for them to resupply. Same with this group. Let's have them come over here. So this thing is completely full with about 250 ammo or supplies. And uh, that replenishes everything from uh, rifle rounds to pistol and machine gun and AT and that kind of thing. So we'll let them sit there for a while. We've got about two minutes left. Let's go ahead and have our troops try to man all the trenches. The guns. And some of the emplacements on the inside, such as these MG42s inside the bunker. Okay, that looks good. Try to get some more troops inside that tank. Okay, now there's already friendlies inside the trench too, so it's not like we're defenseless, but we certainly could pick up on those numbers a bit. We keep another AT here on the far left side. Just to watch that corner. Looks like we have another artillery gun over here, 1902. Somewhere around there. Oh, 122 millimeter. A little different. First glance, it appeared to be the same as the other one, but indeed it is different. 122 millimeter M1910. A little more modern. All right. Rauhallisesti nyt vaan. Turha hermoille menee se edusta yhtään mitä. Ei ne ole ihmisiä kummempi. Tähtää vyön kohdalle, se on paras. Kyllä se siitä selviää. Alright, we got a few guns still in the back. If we need to fall back, we'll grab those. And same with any other emplacements or vehicles that we find. For now though, the emplacements in the tank should be useful. And we'll keep the tank back just a little bit. Always bring that up or push it back if needed. Well, it looks like we have a couple of artillery guns still. Here and here, a couple of trucks there and there. Uh, more than likely for mines, but really don't have enough time for that machine gun there. And let's go ahead and get the troops on the... Oh boy, here comes the artillery. Take cover. And 14 minutes of Soviet onslaught begins. Fix bayonets and get ready to use grenades. You heard them, boys. Here come the Soviet hordes. Probably going to be some tanks in here. Well, not tankettes, but actual decent tanks. Looks like a uh, whole oh, armored car is coming up. Also, it looked like a T-60, was it? It was, till it exploded just now. Or, well, T-70, but close enough. Guns are on standby, good. Wow, the Finns are wiping them out quickly. Look at this as we dive into realism mode. Check that out. Removing the HUD and such makes it just look real badass. Still better than Redfall. Boom, big explosions there from the artillery. It's great, if you follow the tracers, you can kind of actually see where the enemy's concentrated at a lot of movement on the road and just off to the side here. So, you know, main, main movement is just on the road sector and just a little bit to our, I believe that's the eastern side That's the western side the opposite so looks like enemy forces are mostly coming in on the road and just trying to go straight in there might be an attempt to flank at some point so we got to keep an eye on things but the good news is so long as our artillery is not firing we're doing a, a good job of keeping them at bay with our uh, rifle and machine guns
still hear a lot of machine gun fire. Wow, the bunker is doing a great job of holding that. Fantastic. Now we got a armored car zipping in. No, an AT unit, an SU-76M. Scout truck moving in. Some lend lease stuff. Ooh, big, big explosion, whatever the hell that was. Possibly an armored car there exploding. Possibly armored cars being liquidated by the artillery at such a great range that they're exploding off the map. Who knows? A lot of units in the center now. Wow, look at all that. Still a lot of concentration on that main road. It looks like they're hiding behind the vehicles there, taking cover. In good numbers. We can go ahead and request an artillery barrage just next to that truck. And a round should come falling down shortly. Looks like it may have hit the trees. But we'll request a non-stop uh, barrage on that road since there's so many enemies just trying to go straight in via the road. Hmm, finally a challenge. A T-34, 1942 approaching. We'll make short work of that very shortly. Lots of units chatting. A lot of chatty chatters there. Panzerfaust, Panzer Shrek should make short work of all those tanks. T-34 should be able to get pretty close. That armor is pretty good. But our guns are better. It's already been tracked. So it's not going anywhere. It looks like our tank is tracked too, but lucky for us, we're defending. Only two tank crewmen inside that tank. I think we should probably keep this guy alive. He seems important. Keep that artillery gun free and shooting at whatever. We need some more personnel inside that tank. guy's AT infantry, well, he's promoted to a different type of AT infantry with tanks. Good thing we brought over that little box, too, with the machine gun here. Has a thousand rounds in it, but uh, it's pretty much ever supplied. Interesting, it almost looks like an AK-47. Soviets copying that design a little bit, I think. 7.62 looks a little bit like a 30 cal towards the end, but that banana clip and all that kind of looks, uh, hmm. Hmm. Nah, they, everything they make is original. Totally, yeah, absolutely. Don't question it. Alright, seven minutes remaining. They are really not able to get past the middle part of the map here. They are not, I mean, it's like pretty much a death zone right about here. And only here on the right side are they able to even get close. I don't even think this guy was under my command. Medic veteran, damn. Hope that wasn't one of our guys. Could be some of the AI that's strewn about. I wish we would get command of everybody. 
would be nice to be able to use, especially AI-controlled medics, to actually bring people back to life. Alright, we can hold the line here with the MG. Reloading. So weird how he has to reload. It's just basically like reloading an AK, but with a 30 cal barrel. Got a man down. Good luck finding our medic in this hell. And we found him. Wow. Lucky me. Well, another six minutes of Soviet onslaught. And in 1946, I'd imagine that these troops are highly trained, highly motivated, and uh, well supplied. And uh, same with the Germans, except for the whole supply part, maybe. However, they will probably be coming to the Finns' aid soon enough. Now, since this is based on an alternative reality, the Germans and the Finns must still be... Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly if everything's kind of been the same up to a certain point or if the Finns and the Germans allied earlier. It's almost like playing a game of perhaps Hearts of Iron. Where perhaps you start as Germany and you ally fin with Finland very early. And then uh, Finland just decides to stay loyal to Germany through the whole game even after um, you know the Winter War. Then the Germans supplying them even more and even earlier, meaning that they could be more... Uh, defensive, or possibly that the Soviets then built up before their attack and after the invasion, uh, anything could be written, but you know, maybe the Finns never invaded uh, with the Germans and now the Soviets are kind of uh, getting a little revenge for their failed winter war, something along those lines. Who knows? Looks like we have a tank moving left, a T 35. Would you look at that? We've got a battleship on the ground, ladies and gentlemen. Check that out. Big boy here about to get blapped. Any moment. Oh, that was close. Almost into the engine compartment from one of those uh, large, I think it was the M1910, which I think was quite a large round. Right now, this thing's being hit by 76 millimeter, which is pretty plentiful for this tank to take, but this is 122 millimeters. So that's that. If this thing hits, if this next round bops it, it's going to be all over for him. Can't actually see that tank. Oh, look at that. We got like a top down view, like we got a spotter. Oh, it's been bopped. Let's bop over here then with all the infantry. Bop. Oh, damn. Whoa. What the hell? Whoa. Oh, we have yellow phosphorus. That's what this is firing. It's a smoke round. Is it out of uh, regular ammo? Oh. I guess it's fired all the uh, decent ammo. Never mind. Uh, we don't have enough time to really resupply that thing, but okay. That was an. Happy little accident. Look at those happy little trees. Field Marshal Ross would be happy. Look at that. Now what if what if we start a little happy little counterattack here on the left side? What if we just what if we just reinforce? What if we just Happy little offensive. Alright, well, enough of that. Let's go ahead and see if we can get more troops up to the front. Get some more guns up here. Did our man get killed? Looks like the right side needs a little more reinforcement. He's wounded. But we need our troops to cover. We're guarding on both sides of the trench. Uh, let's get off this gun too. We're, some of our guns are running out of supply, but we're down to about three minutes. Time to start cleaning up this town. There's our medic veteran. Let's keep him down. He's very valuable. We'll put him down there in that trench. All right, so worst case scenario, they're getting a little close on the right side, but that's about it. Those PPSHs and MP40s are doing great work. Another man down. And another one. 
Now, there are mods for this game that allow for automatic, uh, I think it's old boys, uh, both Vietnam mod and anything like World War II mod or whatnot, uh, has so you don't have to babysit medics and squads. Uh, one of the biggest casualties in this game is probably AI inco uh, incompetence, where if uh, a soldier's running through a field and they run out of ammo, they will stop to reload rather than running to cover and then reload, so they'll be j basically shot at in the middle of an empty field. And additionally, uh, a medic will be stand, you know, he'll be the sole survivor of his squad standing in the middle of a bunch of wounded, and he won't act without permission to do so. And so, you know, entire squads, platoons, battalions, armies can be wiped out just because everything has to be... You have to be a medical babysitter giving orders to tell people that they're allowed to counterattack or... Uh, well, actually, you, you have the options to do that, you know, with the firing mode. But for healing people, it's a different story. Additionally, I wish there was a... Uh, the ability to um, tell tanks to only target infantry or only target tanks would be nice. Uh, looks like we're out of ammo in here. Even though these guys have supply, we might need to move... Let's see if we can move this little supply box closer so we can resupply the... Um... Oh wow, did that... that guy teleport into the wall? Oh my bad. Okay, well... He becomes the Great Wall of Finland now. My bad. Alright, well, forget that. With just a few seconds left, we're going to go ahead and just get everybody in the trenches. See if the medic is coming on over here. They will overrun us. No, 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 we're fine. Don't be a defeatist. Our medic may be dead. Or actually wounded. That could be him there. It says SMG infantry, but well, he's got a Panzer Shrek. I don't know. Panzer Faust. Oh boy. Alright, let's turn the tank that away. Guy stuck in the wall is holding him back. He literally he's literally stopping those troops from assaulting. He was. Right, let's back the tank up a little bit, keep it safe. Oh, flamethrower's on the left side, cool. Left side has collapsed. We're getting orders to retreat now anyway. Planned or scripted overrunning of our position. Oh man, what's going to happen now? Ah, second line of defense. Imagine that. Okay. So this position here we're going to have to fall all the way back to. Which is about double the distance. We can get all the vehicles and stuff back if we can. Soviet artillery barrage coming in in a minute anyway, so we must fall back. Most of those guys aren't going to make it out, but luckily the tank will survive. As well as, I, I think, our CO for the area. Pretty damn cool how this mod maker has balanced it out so that way you're holding strong until the very last second and then you just kind of get overrun and it's it's planned out beautifully. Well done. Takes a lot of time and uh, testing to do that. But all the previous times that they've made mods like this, all the whole community, it's every mod that you publish, every time that you make a mission or a map is a learning opportunity. And a time to get it right. Alright, we're going to pull back our commander. Who I think is our commander. We'll just say is our commander because it sounds cool. Send him over to that right side. Good. Alright, just a few AI stragglers remain on that front line. Honestly, if I could, it would be a good idea to keep infantry behind for that remaining minute and a half. And see if you can somehow get a truck. In retrospect... 
you know, next time I play this, or if you go to play this yourself, grab one of these Opal Blitz trucks and uh, see if you can throw one of the guns on it, uh, such as the one that was uh, back here, like this uh, 107 or something like that. Grab like an artillery gun and maybe a couple of AT guns and, and roll them onto the trucks. Now, unfortunately, they might not be able to uh, be resupplied. So if you have limited ammo with them, at least you can get two or three shots. That could kill, you know, 10 or 20. So that's good. Okay, we got a triage center here. Big O trench setup. Infantry here. Wow, and the Soviets firing on their own position. Blue on blue. Or red on dead, I guess. And that is all we have time for today for the Last Grenadier 1946 mod for Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront. You can get that, of course, on Steam, both the uh, main game, the DLC, and also the mod via the Steam Workshop. And there's a hell of a lot of great stuff out there. If you haven't checked it out, highly recommended. Anybody who's enjoyed uh, Call to Arms, or rather Company of Heroes, or uh, Men of War or whatnot, will thoroughly enjoy both the modern version and also the Eastern Front World War II version, with hopefully the Western Front coming sometime soon. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, buddy. Thanks for watching.